John Trout. I'm going to tell you a little bit today about the most influential and iconic American car, and maybe the most iconic and influential car in history, the Ford Model T. And I'm going to show you two early examples of Model Ts. One is a 1912 Model T Ford Torpedo, and the other is a 1913 Model T Ford Touring Car. And I'm going to give you some details about these about the features of them and how they work um, later in this video. Henry Ford's vision and dream was to produce a car that every person in the U.S. could afford and have. He began production in 1908 and Model T production continued until 1927. During that period, Ford made 15 million cars, which set a world record. And that record stood until 1972, when it was overtaken by the Volkswagen Beetle. In 1913, Ford began pr with the famous mass production line. And that line enabled Ford to make many more cars and to make them quite cheaply. It's been estimated that at one point in time in the U.S., 40 to 50% of all automobiles were Ford Model Ts. If you're low on gas, you, won't be able, you might not be able to drive up a hill, but you will be able to back up a hill. And that's true, and I can attest to that because I've done it. And the reason for that is this. The gas tank in most Model Ts is underneath the driver's seat. So if you're going up a steep hill and the car's pointing up, the seat becomes lower than the carburetor and the gas won't be able to flow by gravity to the engine. But if you turn around, the gas tank is now higher than the carburetor and you can back up the hill. Now, of course, this Ford Torpedo is different because it has a gas tank in the back that's at a higher level, so it's a little better at going up hills like that. Another interesting fact is you've all, all I'm sure, heard that Ford famously said, you can have any color Model T you want as long as it's black. And that became, to be, that became true. Initially though, the cars were, were painted in different colors. Uh, the all black era began in Model Ts in late 14 and, and 1915. But there's a reason for it. And the reason was black paint dried faster than other colors. And that enabled them to run the production line faster. This is a 1912 Model T Ford Torpedo. 1912 was one of the more interesting years for Model Ts because of the varied and the number of body styles. They made five different body styles in that year. The Ford Torpedo was probably the sporty and the racier body style of Model Ts. They made torpedoes in two years, only two years, 1911 and 1912 and they're characterized by the round gas tank behind the seats. In all other Model Ts, the round gas tank is not seen as it's underneath the, the driver's seat. This car new would have been about $590. It's a brass era car and has all of the brass features and stylings that you also see at the, in the Stanleys at Auburn Heights. This car has a crank start, which you use to start. There's no generator or starter in the car. The headlights work off acetylene gas, and the brass item you see on the running board here is an acetylene generator. It put carbide pellets in it in water, and those are mixed to form acetylene gas that goes through tubing and then powers the headlights. The horn in the car is actuated by a bulb, which you see here, and sounds like this. The interior of the car has a wood firewall. It has a wooden coil box. You can see the brass speedometer and the normal pedals uh, and controls associated with Model Ts. This is a 1913 Model T Ford touring car. It was produced in July of 1913. The cast date on the engine is actually July 14th. 1913, Ford produced about 170,000 cars, and about 127,000 were touring cars. It was the year that Ford began its famous mass production line, where they could really ramp up the volume of the cars. This car new would have sold for $600. 
Interestingly, 1913 was the first year that Ford started using Made in USA on many of the components, which was used throughout the years of Model T's. This car also is a brass car with many of the same styling features of the cars at Auburn Heights. There's actually a 1914 Model T very similar to this in the Auburn Heights collection that is shown and you can go for rides in. The 13 and 14 model years were almost the same. This also has acetylene headlights. It has a bulb horn. It has the acetylene generator on the running board and many of the features that I showed you on the earlier 1912. The inside has two seats, so this is actually a five passenger touring car. The front seat controls and instrument panel are, are very similar with a wooden coil box, a brass speedometer, um, and the controls and pedals uh, for driving a Model T. Here's the engine compartment on the 1913 Model T. You can see there's four cylinders, four spark plugs. The wires are going to the coil box that you heard buzzing earlier. There's a water pump here to help keep the engine cool. And actually you can see the casting date here of 7-14-13 that was cast into the block. These round brass cups are actually grease cups. They're filled with grease and you turn them a little bit with your fingers every now and then and that squirts grease into the parts that need greasing. On the other side of the engine, we can see again the spark plugs. We can see the carburetor, the intake and exhaust manifolds. We can also see the made Ford made in USA script as it appears and starts to be used widely in 1913. So let's look at the controls and the instruments on this 1913 Model T. On the far right side, you, you see the speedometer. Um, next to it is the little brass knob that controls the fuel mixture and the air and gas mixture in the carburetor. In the middle, you see the wooden coil, coil box that holds four coils that fire the spark plugs. And on the front of that is a switch that turns the car on and off and from magneto to battery. There's three pedals on the floor. Uh, the left pedal is the clutch and forward speeds. And if it's in the middle position where it is now, the car is in neutral. If it's pushed all the way to the floor in its first gear, and if you let your foot off of it, it'll pop up into all the way out into high gear. The middle pedal is reverse. When you push it all the way to the floor, the car goes backwards. And the right pedal is the brake. You push it down and that brakes the car. The lever sticking up on the far side is the emergency brake or the parking brake. When it's in a vertical position like it is, it holds the car in neutral and you pull it back a little bit further and it sets the emergency brakes. When you push it all the way forward, that enables the car to be put in low and high gear. And in the position it is now, it keeps it in neutral. So when you're driving with that lever forward, you have to remember if you want neutral to put your foot on the clutch and hold it halfway up. The throttle is on the steering wheel and it's on the right side. It's this lever. So that controls the gas and controls the forward speed of the car. The lever on the far side is the spark advance and it's pushed all the way up to start the car. And generally for running the car, it's, it's in a downward position. And this controls the firing of the timing of the spark plugs. When you're gonna start a hand crank car, you have to remember to put this all the way up to, ret to ret retard the spark because if you don't, it's possible that the car can kick back while you're cranking it. And it is possible for these cars to break your wrist or your arm if they kick back. So now we're ready to start the 1913. So we've got the spark advance all the way up. We've got the throttle down about a third of the way, and we're gonna put the switch onto battery. Now you can hear the coils buzzing. Now we're gonna go around and crank, but to make sure, we also wanna make sure that we're in neutral and we have the parking brake on so the car uh, doesn't drive away while we're cranking it. So we engage the crank and give it a pull.
now we're ready to go for a drive. I'm going to put my, my right foot on the brake, and I'm going to put my left foot on the clutch and hold it halfway up. And I'm going to take the parking brake lever now and move it into forward in the driving position. I'm now going to give the little more little gas with the throttle. I'm going to push my left foot all the way down to the floor to get it into first gear and take my right foot off the brake. Off we go. Now I let off on the throttle and I let my left foot up and I'm in second in high gear. Now I can give it some gas and we'll get up a little bit of speed to make it up this next hill. Driving and riding in Model T's are a blast. They are so much fun. You're sitting up high. You've got a great view of the road and the surroundings. You're not going too fast. You can feel the surroundings, the air flows. And you can really get a feel for what it was like to ride with a car in the past, except that the roads are a whole lot better. You can also get a feel for where the word car comes from. Because this is really feels like a carriage, a carriage with a motor in it. In fact, early car, cars were called motorized carriages, and it was later shortened to motor car. And then finally, the motor was dropped because every motor car had a motor in it, and, thing, and the automobiles were just called cars. And that's the origin and where the word car comes from. Mm -hmm.